The government has been experimenting on people around the Tri-Counties for generations. Everyone it has tested on has mysteriously died or disappeared, except for one man. His name is Patch, and he's still alive to tell the story that they don't want told. Check out my short horror story called The Plant on Amazon now. This episode of Subject Found 2-8, A Killer Named, is brought to you by my patrons, Faith, Malay, and S. Chase Day. Thank you for supporting this show and helping me bring it to the rest of the world for free. You truly rock. What in the world are you talking about? I said I know who the killer is. There's something I noticed after the second murder. The Margaret Chapman one. Honestly, I was surprised no one else mentioned it before because it was staring me in the face, so I thought it was obvious. I waited, but it was never brought up. But this latest murder solidified it for me. Stop stroking yourself and tell them about your theory. Whatever. Marshall, listen. Margaret Chapman was killed just days after Lacey Nichols, right? Yes. And then we go a few weeks before Miss Stride is killed. Right. I know the timeline, but listen, I don't have a lot of time. If you think you got something, I'm all ears, but if you're looking to philosophize and theorize, then I want you to clearly hear me. I'm not interested, especially while I've got a serial killer on my hands. I promise you won't regret this. So I was going through the circumstances of these murders, looking at the demographics of the three victims, seeing that they were all women. All women of ill repute. I wouldn't say that's accurate at all. Yeah, anyways, three women, three single women, all of possibly ill repute by our community standards. Maybe, maybe not. It doesn't really matter unless you consider what else I noticed. And what's that? The way they were murdered. What was done to them. We know there's significant consistencies in not only the way they were killed, but also the physical evidence. We get it. That's why we're looking at a single killer. So unless you're going to tell me we're wrong about that, I'm curious what all this is about. But I don't have time to dance. Do you have a name for me or not? And if you do, I'm going to want to know why. That's the thing, Marshall. Not only were they killed in the same part of the city and found in the same part of the city, but they were murdered and disfigured in pretty much the same way, with the exception of the last one. You've said yourself that it's possible the murderer in this Miss Stride case was interrupted, that she wasn't disfigured like the Nichols and Chapman murders because he wasn't allowed to finish. Because of this witness, possibly, right? Sure. I'm still not sure where you're going. That's by his design. He'll get there eventually. Angelique, please. But that's not the only similarity they have. They also have their names. What? What about their names? They're not the same. They're not related. What am I not understanding? The White Chapel murders. The White... What? In 19th century England, in an area of London known as White Chapel, there was a series of murders that rocked that community for years. In fact, it bore a legend. Women were murdered and disemboweled, much like what is happening here. Are you talking about what I think you're talking about? It makes sense, doesn't it? Does anyone mind telling me what's going on? What are you talking about? He's talking about Jack the Ripper. What? That's... That doesn't make sense. These women here, they... They were... Butchered just like Jack the Ripper's victims. All women victims. All with their throats slashed just like his victims. In case that isn't enough, his victims were disemboweled. Just like Lacey Nichols and Margaret Chapman. I don't get the link. Stride wasn't disemboweled. Because the killer was interrupted. Marshall said as much. Our suspicions are holding up. We still believe the killer was interrupted. So the same type of victims who were all killed in the same manner as Jack the Ripper's victims. No, no. He killed prostitutes. Some of his more famous murders were prostitutes, yeah. But do we want to be pedantic? I'm not so sure. 
Are you really falling for this, Marshall? Is it really that crazy, Janice, or are you jealous that I've cracked a link you failed to make after? We're not here for that. Marshall, what do you think? It's not a bad theory. We don't typically see copycat murders a century later, but it doesn't mean this isn't what we could be looking at. It's definitely possible. But I'm not sold. Not yet. Still, Branson, y'all got me thinking, and I'm going to take this back to the office and look into it. This is <laughs> nuts. Maybe. Like I said, I'm not completely sold on it. But I'm still... Tell him about the names. The names aren't relevant. These the women were The canonical weren't... five. Pardon me? Five victims of the same killer. Five women who were mutilated by their killer. Ringing a bell? It's creepily similar, but that doesn't mean... I bet you are... can't guess surnames of the first three victims. Jesus Christ, don't yes. tell me... Yes, same last names. Murdered in the same order. Mary Ann Nichols, Annie Chapman, and Elizabeth Stride were killed in the late 19th century in London, all within a short time of each other. Fast forward to 2017, Memphis, Tennessee. Lacey Nichols, Margaret Chapman... And Shelly Stride. Well, fuck. This theory of yours, it's good. But the names, you said there were five? Well, it's possible he murdered more than five women. See, he was Not linked with... Not important right now. I need to focus my staff's energy. You might actually be on to something legitimate. Marshall, this is ridiculous. Unless I'm completely mistaken, Jack the Ripper was never found, never identified. Wasn't he supposedly some Irish immigrant? Some dock worker or something who just had a thing for hating women? He targeted prostitutes. This doesn't match up. Prostitutes weren't the only women who were killed, Janice. There were others. But they weren't necessarily linked with the Ripper, right? No, but the authorities back then lacked the technology we have today. He could have been involved in all the Whitechapel murders, for all we know. Or he could have only killed one of those women and had a bunch of copycat shit going on. Who knows? Well, none of that changes the fact that this is more than coincidence. Honestly, I don't give a rat's ass if Jack the Ripper was a real person or not. I'm going to have my officers check out what you're saying. And if you're right, you might have really just given us the kick this case needs. I've got to get back down to the station. The names of the last two victims of Jack the Ripper. What were they? I can't they? believe this. Can we do that somewhere else? Why? J just tell me. It's a secret for Branson for some reason. I'm just trying not to upset people. Why? Because we have too much estrogen to operate the internet? We can't figure it out ourselves? <laughs> Don't be an ass. Just, just please, Marshall, can we step outside? For the love of God, just tell us the names of the last two victims. <sighs> Fine. The fourth was Edoes. Okay, and the last one? Uh, it's... Um... It's Kelly. Uh, uh, oh, God. My last name. That motherfucker. I swear. I cannot believe him. I cannot believe he did that. He totally fucked me. He fucking fucked me. Janice? Hey, girl. Are you okay? Listen, you need to calm down. Don't tell me what I need to do. People can hear you. Out there, in the cubicles. You're scaring people. What's going on with you? What are you talking about? I'm fine. It's just, just that... asshole. Moving in on my story. This... This isn't a big deal. St stop making it out like it is. I'm just... I'm just frustrated. You've got nearly the entire office staring at the bathroom door in fear. Like some goddamn beast is going to burst out of it at any moment. So don't tell me not to make a big deal out of this when it's you creating the drama, okay? Hello? A friend? Right here, trying to help you from yourself. I'm not your enemy, Janice. I don't need your help. And fuck those people out there. I don't give a shit about what they think. Well, do you give a shit about what I think? 
This may come as a surprise to you, Janice, but you don't exactly have an untarnished image. How about giving me a little respect for standing up for you when no one else would, if you can't at least appreciate me coming in here and checking on you? And if you can't show me some respect for this, how about for the times I stood up for you? Or for the times I stood by you? Or, or for the times I stood up for you with Branson and the assholes you constantly take home who end up treating you like shit? Or for your mother? How about all those times I stood by you, defended you? You know I stuck my neck out for you. Did you know that? When Monica was being questioned by the board about hiring you, she started hemming and hawing, and it was me who pushed her across to your side. She likes you, but she knew the risk of hiring you. You got nothing? I see how it is. Well, you keep it up, Janice, and you're going to run out of allies. Everyone is stressed and things are a little tense, but I expect everyone to work together. Like professionals. Got it? Branson? Janice? Okay, good. Now, I want us to explore this angle. No, no, Janice, this is still your story. I'm not unassigning you, but I would like you to partner with Branson on it. W wouldn't it be I better if- This wasn't a proposal. Everyone understand? Yes. Yep. Janice? Yeah. Yeah, Monica, I got it. Okay, then. So, we're all on the same page? We're all working together on this? Branson, keep looking into this theory you've got. Find any commonalities and get a list together so we can see if there are any possible story angles here. This is good. Real good. It could make a huge difference. Hell, it could be the story, so I need you to become an expert on everything about Jack the Ripper. Where he lived, how he lived, every detail about every possible victim he had. What were any social or personal issues? Who did they suspect of being the Ripper? Why? Was he English? Immigrant? Employed? Unemployed? All of the who, what, and whens. I want it all. Give me every dirty detail you can dig up. I'm on it. If Branson is doing all of that, what do you need us to do? Janice is... She'll be working the story as... as she can. What does that and mean? me? When you were indisposed with the... Um, the... the situation, Marshall wanted to make sure you were available to him. He wants to talk to you. Today. Why? Because... You know, the, the, the case with the names. He thinks I'm really at risk? If Branson is right about this, this theory of his. The final canonical five victim's last name was Kelly. I'm sure he's just being cautious. Oh my God. This can't be real. He, he wants to go over a few things and asked you to call him as soon as you were free. Like Janice said, I'm sure he just wants to be cautious and, and I, keep you safe. I... Can I be excused? Excuse me. Of course. Call me? If I can. <sighs> That's gotta be tough. I feel for her. Why didn't you tell her immediately? Why'd you make her sit through a meeting before you said anything, after she had to ask? Uh, uh... Because she's not in immediate danger. Marshall said so. If Branson is right, this killer will remain faithful to the order of the original five victims. And we don't even know for sure if this is what is happening. So, so Marshall said it was important for her to keep her routine and stay engaged. It's, it's not healthy to abandon routine. It'll help keep things normal for her. And 
And she's still part of the staff. She's part of the cadre work in the story, so she needs to stay involved. That's why. Don't you think she should have a say in that? Branson, would you excuse us? Yeah, sure. I'll start working this. Thanks. <sighs> Let's talk, Janice. Seriously, Monica, I get it. Branson stumbled onto something, and honestly, I'm okay. It makes sense to have him do the research. No, no. I don't want to talk about that. I want... I want to talk with you about... About what happened today. About you. About your... Your... You know, your, your state. Your health. How are you doing with... With everything? Monica... I'm fine. Everything is fine, honestly. Don't worry about me. We've got other things going on that need our attention. Normally, I'd agree with you, but... But... You haven't been here very long, and there have been problems. With your health, with getting along with people. And... And then this... This explosion in the restroom. In case you haven't noticed, this is an incredibly stressful story. I'm not covering local cultural events calendar or news out of the school boards. God, I'm covering the murders of three goddamn women. There it is again. There's what again? You... You... Janice, the paper has been very patient throughout this. There was always a risk hiring you. But I was willing to take it because of your amazing talent. And don't get me wrong, you're a hell of a writer. As much as you've alienated yourself from a number of agencies around the city, you're still highly spoken of by a number of people. Trust me. There were some reservations on the board, but you're here because people took up your cause. They believed in you enough to endorse you. Okay, great. I appreciate those people, but I didn't get here because of them. And I'm not working this type of story because of them. I'm here because of my work, what I bring to the table, plain and simple. So I am sorry if my peculiarities bother some people, but honestly, Monica, everyone has them. They just manifest differently. I have, I have medical issues which require special attention, but they don't normally interfere with my performance. And when they do, I more than make up for it. Don't I? Don't you remember? My safety was threatened because I worked late to make up the time I'd missed. I got followed to my car by a man who might possibly be the person the police are looking for in these murder cases because my dedication kept me here long after everyone else went home. So please, don't preach at me. It's not fair. You have that luxury. What? The luxury of only worrying about you? I don't. I have to worry about everyone here and... You know, I don't care about the constant pissing matches between you and Branson as long as they stay behind closed doors. You two don't like each other? Fine. Just keep it between the two of you and, better yet, Keep the nastiness in my office where I can rein the two of you in when you need it. But the problem Are you is... Are talk to him too? Are you going to lay down the law for Branson? This isn't about him. And, and that's not your concern, really. This is about you. This entire conversation is about you. Jesus. Janice. I'm trying to work with you on this. I need you to work with me too. Fine, Monica. Fine. What do you want from me? I'm going to have Branson and Angelique stay on top of any breaking elements of the story. This might be You're the... suspending me? What? No, I'm not. No, don't think that. Then what's happening here? I need you to take some time off. I need you to recharge. Refresh. Just step away from this story for a little bit. It's a horrible story. Absolutely horrible. And I think I unfairly expected too much from you when I put you on it alone. I should have had either Angelique or Branson, or both, take this on with you. 
but I was thinking more about protecting the paper than I was the people. And I'm sorry for that, Janice. I'm really sorry. So take some time. <sighs> but, but I, I, but I don't want to. Okay, I don't want to take a break. This is my story. Mine. Not Branson's, not Angelique's. It's mine. Janice, the story belongs to the city. It's our story. And you're not doing it any justice in the state that you're currently in. This isn't a request. So you can finish the day and then collect your things after the office empties, okay? But I don't want to see you back here until you're in the right frame of mind. Take care of yourself. Thank you for downloading and listening to this episode of Subject Found, a Paul Sadine production. You can find out more about the show, my other audio dramas, such as Who Killed Julie, Diary of a Madman, or Atheist Apocalypse, over at paulsadine.com. At the website, you can also sign up for my No Spam Guarantee newsletter. Occasionally, I will send out news about the show's or an upcoming book via the newsletter. I only do it sporadically, so have no fears. Sign up with good faith that I will not spam your inbox. Subject found is scored, sound design, and mixed by Dog and Pony Studios in Las Vegas. If you love the work that they do, and I sure do, check them out over at dogandponystudios.net. Speak to John and let him know I sent you. We only have two more episodes in this season, but if you do want to support the show, you can go over and get the entire season right now over at the website, including the alternate ending. Each and every dollar that we earn through that goes funneled right back into the show to try to get us going for season three. Thank you to everyone who has purchased this season of Subject Found. It has helped out immensely. And before we get out of here, I want to give you a recommendation from Fate Crafters. From my good friend Thoreau Smiley. Attention Helmart Shoppers and his new show, 1994. Attention Helmart Shoppers is a supernatural comedy that is set in a fictional big box superstore, which unfortunately is situated right over top the buried gates of hell. Join his cast of put upon retail workers as they battle the forces of darkness to bring you the best customer service that minimum wage can provide. You can find all the information about that show over at attentionhelmartshoppers.com and find them on Twitter and Facebook as well. But Thoreau also has a new show coming out. The show is called 1994. It's a road trip comedy set in the spring of 1994, and it follows the adventures of high school senior Scott Sweet and his friends as they attempt to escape the boredom of their dead end small town Arizona suburb by skipping school to go to Disneyland, deliver 20 pounds of marijuana to LA, team up with a bank robber on the lam, escape from angry unpaid mechanics, and make a side trip to Las Vegas, accidentally taking peyote to travel with a band of traveling hippies. Avoid cops, get laid, convince their parents to not ground them when they get home, and maybe, just maybe, score enough money to take Shannon McDaniels, the prettiest girl at school, to the prom. It beats second period algebra. It's set to the soundtrack of the 1990s inspired by alt-rock. 1994 will be available on all your podcatchers to include Apple Podcasts and where you stream podcasts. You can find out more about the show over on Twitter at 1994pod. Heather Auden plays Janice Herring. Maximilian Defoe of Thematic Podcast is Angelique Kelly. Lauren Wisniewski is Monica Ravenalt. Austin Beach is Branson Stewart. John McLean of Dog and Pony Studios and producer of Subject Found and Who Killed Julie is Marshall Rogers. 